Well, September 10th is the peak of the hurricane season in the Atlantic Basin, and we're three days away from that. And we've got three different hurricanes to talk about. Of course, Irma being the primary storm, we'll have much more on that to come. But here's Katia. That's uh, just off the coast there. Winds of 90 miles per hour. And then there's also Jose with winds. Excuse me, Katia's 80 miles per hour winds. Uh, and Jose are 90 miles per hour, neither of which are expected to impact the United States here in the shorter term. But Irma, of course, we're keeping a close eye on that and it could impact the U.S. We'll have much more on that in just a second. Let's look at right now because we're at uh, York Sky Cam, a couple of clouds here and there, but it's at 65 degrees. Not a bad afternoon so far. The dew points down into the 50s, too. So we do have that dry air and a nice breeze. West winds at nine miles per hour and the York Fair here in the background where the York Fair is kicking off tomorrow. And for today, as everybody's getting all set up, partly sunny skies could be a stray shower or two, but I think most of us will stay dry today and pretty comfortable with our highs topping out in the low 70s. Tonight, a cool night ahead, lows into the low to mid 50s with partly cloudy skies. And then we head into tomorrow and we will start off with sunshine, but I do expect to see the clouds billowing up throughout the day, turning mostly cloudy by the afternoon as an upper level disturbance swings through. And that disturbance could bring us a couple of afternoon showers. It does not look like a washout, but it is something we will be watching for here as as we go throughout, uh, of course, the next 24 hours. In the meantime, we're tracking the tropics, of course, and here is Katia. Those uh, uh, the path of is expected to go into uh, Mexico again, winds 80 miles per hour. That makes it a category one storm. And then here's Hurricane Jose winds 90 miles per hour. That's also a category one storm. National Hurricane Center is expecting it to become a major hurricane. But of course, all eyes here in the United States and across the Caribbean are on Hurricane Irma, and it is still a powerhouse storm, a Category 5 hurricane with winds of 175 miles per hour, and it's headed right at the Turks and Caicos later this evening. A very bad situation, already a bad situation in parts of the Caribbean uh, and areas that it already went through. So Category 5 storm expected to continue through the Turks and Caicos, and then as we head into tomorrow, we'll be tracking very close to the Bahamas. Here's where things get a little interesting for the United States because there is expected to be a northward turn, a little bit of a pull to the north here as we go into early Saturday morning. Still a very strong hurricane. Then the National Hurricane Center expects that cone of uncertainty to go right at the state of Florida. We're talking about later Saturday into Sunday morning for any possible landfall, but notice where this cone is. There's still some uncertainty here is exactly where that northward turn takes place. It could potentially miss the coast of Florida and then ride up to the north if it makes landfall. It would weaken and then head due north into the Carolinas by the time we hit the early week. And we are talking about Monday and a Tuesday for possibly a second landfall. So here are some of the impacts here. Next 24 hours will be the Turks and Caicos in and the Bahamas under the gun. And it does look like a bad situation down in those locations. And by the weekend, Irma will be approaching Florida and possibly a first landfall. If it makes landfall near Miami, it's just going to be a very catastrophic situation as a very strong hurricane into the early week. Maybe another landfall depends on if it makes landfall in Florida or not. And then we go into uh, midweek for us and we're tracking the chance of maybe even some showers, some rainy and breezy conditions from what's left of Irma by the time it gets here. So still about six days away from any sort of impacts here in the in uh, the Susquehanna Valley, but the United States will be uh, watching this closely over the next couple of days here a little closer to home. We are tracking the chance of a couple of spotty showers into tomorrow afternoon. There's that upper level disturbance. Like I said, still sun to clouds for tomorrow and then we'll start to dry things out going into our Saturday. We'll call it partly sunny as we start off the weekend and some improving conditions for us by the time we hit the weekend itself. So partly sunny Saturday highs in the low 70s. We stay there Sunday. looks like a really nice day on Sunday and then increasing clouds on Monday and we're tracking those rain chances for us here in the Susquehanna Valley from Irma maybe in that Tuesday to Wednesday time period. So still some time to keep yeah. track of it. The intensity of the rainfall flooding, if we're going to see that at this point is still a little too early, although I will say there's going to be a lot of dry air near us, which will probably help us out that helps, in yeah. keeping the flooding down to a minimum. And until then, it really looks like it's going to be pretty nice and comfortable. Uh, for us, for sure. Yeah, yeah. that will, of course, be keeping you up to date on Irma throughout the rest of today. All right. Thank you very much, Matt. You bet.